Emmanuel, Emmanuel, come to us this day. We need you, Lord Jesus. For without you, we can do nothing. Open our hearts to receive you as we celebrate the Advent hope. In Jesus' name we pray. God is good, and all the time, and that is his nature. Peter knows I don't like ambushes, and uh, yeah, you got away with it. Um, I'm humbled, I'm humbled, I'm humbled, I'm humbled. I want to say that it is the doing of the Lord. This is not the doing of man. It is the doing of the Lord. And we will continue to serve God, even in that capacity that God has seen his fate to elevate us. May the name of the Lord be praised. Uh, the last few weeks we have been looking at um, prayer and focusing our attention on the importance of prayer and reminding ourselves that Christians... God expects us to pray. It is a must that we pray. And so for the last few weeks, we have been looking at that and some elements of prayer. We did look at prayer warfare that many of us don't know and don't understand and have gotten lost because of that. And we also shared a light last week on prayer and fasting and how we should first that which is acceptable unto God. Today is a day of celebration. It's a day that we mark Advent. And this season, many of us don't even understand what Advent is. Advent means coming. It's the starting, it's the first Sunday to mark the starting of the season of Christmas and all the way to Easter and going. And celebrating two things and two comings. One, we celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior as a baby. That's Christmas. And we celebrate the coming, the second coming of our Lord and Savior when he will come as a king, as a judge, as a righteous judge. So there today, we remind ourselves that Christ is coming. He came as a baby, but he is coming to judge the world. And we need to be ready for it. And so we need to take our Christian walk seriously. We need to take our relationship with our Lord seriously. As the scenario is painted and probably somebody would ask, why then? How did it come to be? It is, I want to paint a picture that was done very well by Prophet Isaiah. And I want to believe that is where we are as Christians today. Prophet Isaiah was sent by God and given a prophecy to give to Judah, the children of Israel, because they had deviated away from God and they had started worshipping idols. And therefore God sent Isaiah and said, told him to tell them that if they don't repent, God will punish them. But if they repent, salvation is at heart. And it is the same message that we are having today. I want to read quickly in the book of Isaiah and chapter 1. Let's see where it all begins. Hear me, you heavens, listen us. For the Lord has spoken. I lay out children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner, its owner's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation. 
a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spared the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Why should you, why should you be beaten anymore? Why should you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured. The whole heart is afflicted. From the sole of your feet to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only woods and wells and open souls, not cranks or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate. Your cities burnt with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you. Raid waste as one overthrown by strangers. Daughter Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a heart in a cucumber field, like a city at a siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors would have become like Sodom, would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instructions of our God, you people of Gomorrah. May the Lord help us. Because that is the scenario and that's the picture that was painted. That is where we are as a people. And we are being reminded that the Lord, whatever it is that we are doing, the Lord is watching us and the Lord has seen and the Lord is not happy. And hence the celebration of Advent because as we look at Advent, we celebrate the hope that God has given us out of all this mess that we have read about. And many of us, as we sit here today, we can look at the scenario that I have just painted and wonder and ask ourselves, is there any hope? Yes, I submit to us today, yes, there is the Advent hope. There is the hope that comes with knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Advent, we celebrate and we light candles. As you can see there, there's one candle that is late. This candle symbolizes hope. Tell your neighbor there is hope. It doesn't matter what we are going through. It doesn't matter how the world looks like. In the Advent hope, we remind ourselves that the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will write this world. And so even though the picture is so dull, it's so gloomy, I want to submit to us that we have hope, not in ourselves, but we have hope in our God, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is why we light that candle symbolizing hope. In the next four weeks, we will continue to light these candles. The second one that we are going to light, we will light a candle that is going to symbolize love. That in the midst of Advent hope, it is a reminder and a constant reminder that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that those ones who believe shall not perish but will have everlasting life. It is because of love. Advent, we celebrate the love of God who loved us when we are in a mess, who loved us out of sin, who will continue to love us to eternity. The third candle that we, are, we will light, that is the third Sunday, is going to be joy. It will symbolize joy that in the midst of Advent hope, what we get is the joy of the Lord that we should celebrate knowing that we who are Christians, we have been called to be partakers of the joy of the Lord. And it is a virtue that we are told we are given. Number four 
it is we will light the candle symbolizing peace. Why? In Advent hope we are reminded that the Prince of Peace will come. In this evil world, in this perverse generation, in this mess that we find ourselves in, in this hopeless life that sometimes we wonder why we are here. Because it looks like nothing is working out. In the midst of troubled waters, in the midst of fightings within and without, my brothers and my sisters, we will have peace. Because we know God, our Savior, Jehovah Shalom, He is our peace, the Prince of Peace. And He came so that we, He can give us peace. So in the midst of it all, Advent hope brings us peace. And we will be talking about all these that I have talked about, the four of them. Today I will concentrate on Advent hope. Today, I'll concentrate on Advent hope. We who are Christians, we should be hopeful. When we look at Christmas time, it's a time that many are saying there is no money. Because a lot of us look at Christmas and money together. But I submit to us, there is much more than just money. There is the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is our provider. And so we should celebrate as long as we know Christ, we have a reason to celebrate. May I submit to us that the, vir the virtue of hope originates from God through the grace of faith. It draws the Christian towards God providing him or her with hope in God and eternal life. So in the midst of what we are going through, it is critical for us to know, yes, we are in a mess. Yes, things are going wrong. Yes, people are drifting away. But you and me, who are Christians and believers, it is important for us to know there is hope. In the midst of the mess, there is message of salvation that has come to us. This book of Isaiah, Isaiah was charged to go and tell people about God. And not only was he told to call people back to God, he was told, tell them to return, all right? To God and tell them to repent. And that is the call for us this Advent. And as they come and they repent, what will happen? They will be renewed. Salvation. They'll be able to experience salvation. I want to submit to all of us that my brothers and my sisters, we can trust in God's redemption work through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we should be able to rejoice in knowing that, yes, he was born as a child, but he will come as a king. He rules and reigns forever. And this is our hope today. As much as the beginning of chapter 1 of the book of Isaiah paints a dull and a gloomy picture, there is hope. Verse 18, if you have your Bibles. Chapter 1, verse 18. It says, come now, let us settle the matter. Let us reason together. You can tell there is a dispute. Let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient... You will eat the good things of the land. Hallelujah. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. There is hope. There is hope. But we got to do our part. The Lord has done haste. 
We got to do our part. The Lord is inviting us. Come, we listen together. Come, we talk. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter how far you think you have drifted. There is hope if only I am willing to say, here I am, Lord, take over my life. That's all what the Lord is telling us. That there is hope for those ones who are obedient. And he is saying, not only is there hope, those ones who obey the voice of the Lord will eat the good things of the land. Salvation, we don't get it ourselves and we don't merit. But our part is to tell God, here I am. I am a sinner. David was good at it. Psalm 51, where I have sinned against you, and you are new alone, I have sinned against. I wish we can have that spirit of David to tell God, here we are. I have drifted. I have gone away. I have taken you for granted. I have sought other gods, but God, here I come. Here I come. Because ladies and gentlemen, if we don't do that, then this Advent will not have any meaning in our lives. Because the Bible says in verse 20, but if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. So that means there is destruction coming. And the question is, when the end of our lives come, where and what is going, where are we going and what is going to happen to us? And that now takes us to chapter 2 of the book of Isaiah, the passage that we have read. And this is what it says. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountain. I will be exalted above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. That is what chapter 2 is telling us. May I remind us that the mountain of the Lord is called Mount Moriah. This is where Moses was called by God to go and sacrifice Isaac. Why? Because God is a God of covenant and God is a God who keeps promises. He is making reference again, going back to the mountain, going back to the mountain of the Lord, going back to the place of sacrifice, going back to the place of salvation, going back to the place of hope, going back to where our fears can be dispelled. We remind ourselves the story of Abraham sacrificing Isaac at Mount Moriah. The Bible says they got there. And then when they got there, he started and he tied his son up. And as he lifted the knife to cut his son and sacrifice, as God had instructed, the Bible says that God spoke to him audibly and told him, Abraham, do not hurt your son Isaac. Look at the thicket. There is a sheep for you to sacrifice. It is at the mountain of the Lord that God provides. It is at the mountain of the Lord that God provides. There is hope at Advent. God will provide for us because he is reminding us that he is God who is highly exalted, God of perfect moral standards, and he cannot be contrasted with people. He cannot be contrasted with nations. He is perfect and sinless. He is God who is in control, yet he is a judge and a righteous judge. But the good thing is this, he judges with love and mercy. 
And that is why a lot of times, even as we pray, we tell God, remember, remember mercy as we deal, as you deal with your people. So how then, as we focus in this Advent, how then should we prepare? How then? Because the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 is reminding us that we need to prepare because an end is coming. Tell your neighbor, an end is coming. Hallelujah. We are not going to be here forever. An end is coming. And this end is going to come to us abruptly. None of us will know when the timing will be. But we need to be ready. Be alert. That's what the gospel has told us. Because one will go and one will be left. So how do we then prepare ourselves? How do we prepare our hearts in expectation to receive him when he comes? And I remember the song that I love so much. Because I do love it. And I know you love it. And I sing it. And I'll touch it a little to remind us of the excitement that we sing it with. When the Lord is called up yonder, 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 Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you ready? Because the Lord is going to be called up Yoda and nothing will change that. The Lord is going to be called up Yoda. Are you going to be there? I don't know about you, but I know. When the Lord is called up Yoda, 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 I'll be there. Hallelujah. So how do we prepare that that moment when the roll is called up Yoda, that we will be there? What do we do? Because the Bible says, stay alert. Stay alert. Prayerfully. This is what we do. Prayerfully. Prayerfully. Lay down the things that distract you and make room for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Prayerfully. Pray for these distractions, excuses, like an end will, the end will never come. Don't give excuses. We have given them for a long time. But may I remind us that a day is coming. For those ones who have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is not the end. We'll be there. Absent from this life, we will be there with our maker. Make room today for the Messiah to come in. Many of us, we are giving excuses and we are letting others hurt us and block us. I don't know what wrong somebody has done you today. We are in Advent hope. Forgive them. And I'll tell you the reason why this God is big enough to forgive you and to carry our burdens through his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the reason for celebration. That is why we are here today. May the name of the Lord be praised. God wants what is best for us. That is why he sent his son Jesus Christ. And in this Advent Sunday we are taking Holy Communion. And this communion is a communion to remind us of hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus.
Jesus Christ. He died. He came as a baby. He stayed here. He died for our sins. He was sacrificed. And he resurrected. And today we have hope he is in the heavenly places. And we will join him. Advent hope. Today as you come to the altar to receive communion. Lay your burdens here at the altar. Let us give Jesus room in our hearts. And let us arise with a free heart. With open arms for Jesus to enter. To rise with hope. For all that God can and will do in our lives. This is the hope that prophet Isaiah was giving and was calling the children Israel into. This is the hope that Paul was calling the Roman church and calling us today into. This is the hope that Jesus himself was talking about in Matthew 24 and this is our hope. This is our hope. May the good Lord help us. And as I conclude, I want you to remember hope. I have an acronym because I want you to remember there is hope. And this word that I'm using hope as an acronym, number one, it reminds us that Jesus has come to help us. Hallelujah. We need help. Tell your neighbor, you need help. And the help is at hand. Jesus has come to help us. The reason why in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, the reason why they drifted so far from God is because they were looking for help in their own way. And they ignored God who had helped them in the past and they went their own way. I want to submit to us today. We don't have to struggle. Jesus is here to help us. Number two, and that is the O, hope. Take the opportunity. The opportunity is now. In the book of Romans, in chapter 13, and the passage that we have read, we are reminded that this is the day of salvation. Salvation is at hand. Seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity given to us through Christ. Time for salvation is now. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving the devil a chance. My opportunity and your opportunity is now. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Hi. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. But our opportunity is, our opportunity is now. And number three, P, is wait patiently for God. Wait, wait, wait. I know, I know we are going through a lot of challenges. I know many of us have questions of when things are going to change. I know we are in a situation and we are asking when, when, when we are going through suffering, we are going through pain, we are going through turmoil. But I want to submit to us, wait patiently for the Lord. At his time, he will make everything beautiful. Imagine at his time, Jesus came as the savior of the world. At his time, he will come again as the judge of the universe. So wait patiently. And as you wait, I pray that the Prince of Peace will give you peace, will give me peace. Because he promised to give us peace. 
May we wait patiently in peace. And the last one, number four, which is E. We should live in expectation. We are not hopeless, we are hopeful. We are expectant that something good will happen. We are expectant that even though this body wastes away, I know it is not the end that I see my Redeemer. I know that my Redeemer lives and at the end I will see him. I myself, with my own eyes, I will see God and not another. It is Advent hope. Then we don't have to be afraid of tomorrow because one songwriter by the name Naomi sang and I said, God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I'll find is God will work it out. He's working right now. He's working right now. He's working right now. He's working right now. God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I'll find. God will work it out. My God and your God, this Advent, he is perfecting everything that concerns us for his glory. My brothers and my sisters, keep the hope alive. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you are here today and you don't know the Lord, this is your opportunity. Who wants to take the opportunity? If you are here and you have never made a decision for the Lord, this is the opportunity. This is the way to celebrate Advent. Just lift up your hand. We pray together. Anyone who wants to say, yes, I'm not born again. And if I die today, what you have said will not be my portion. Are you ready to go to heaven? If not, this is your opportunity to come and say, here I am, Lord. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. May the good Lord help us. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you that your word has come forth. And almighty and ever living God, anyone in our midst who does not know you as their Lord and Savior, we pray for a spirit of conviction in Jesus' name that anyone in my hearing today will not get lost to Jehovah, but we all reign together in eternity for honor and glory of thy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you.